This week on The Other Side. BCC 179 guest Derek Hayes interviews me while sharing some of his scariest stories in a shared exclusive with Monsters Among Us podcast. To listen, go to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Oh yeah. Bigfoot Collectors Club presents terrifying tales from zombie Bigfoot's cryptid crypt. <laughs> I know a ghost story about you. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. Okay, what is happening? Um, this is so know, weird. Man. Riley, you're here, right? I'm here, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I thought Bryce was... I mean, he should have been here like 15 minutes Yeah, that's minutes what ago. I'm... Uh, let me text him right now, because, you know, usually with us is Bryce Johnson, but... Um, yeah, I have a. It's so weird. I have a text from him earlier confirming you have that mm-hmm. on the BCC text. Yeah, thread, yeah, no, right? I saw him confirm. Yeah, it's just that yeah, I gotta sh- get, I gotta get going because I gotta finish this episode. I still have work to do tonight. So, oh, I mean, well, that's fine. I mean, no rush. But um, it's just weird that Bryce isn't here when he said he would be here. But um, no, it's very get, unlike him. Yeah, yeah, I get. Yeah, he's. I mean, like he's the least flakiest person I know. So well, I don't know about it, that, but <laughs> he's at least like you know top twenty percent. Like he usually yeah. shows up. I feel like he's gonna show up. Maybe maybe he'll show up. We Should we just get started? I think we just get started without Bryce and not worry about it, and our listeners not worry about it. And yeah. um, you it's know, if he shows, he shows. Great. If he doesn't, I'm sure it's fine. Um, I'm just gonna keep my texts on in case he tries to get a hold of one of us and. You know, I don't know. It's weird, but it's fine. Yeah, anyway, that's, good. that's fine. Filling in, that's fine. filling in for Bryce Johnson tonight is our super producer, Riley Bray. Everybody, it's Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt all month long here on the main feed and on the Patreon BCC The Other Side. Mm-hmm. The time of year where we focus on the spooky and scarier side of high strangeness. Uh, and don't forget our Zombie Bigfoot t shirt by Tyler Bentz is available in the BCCT public shop. So mm. click that link in our bios on Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club or over at our Twitter at Bigfoot Pod or head over to wearecampfire.media and smash that shop button and pick up that shirt. Uh, if you want to see the official illustration of ultra terrestrial producer Riley Bray, it's, it's there. It's right there it's on the shirt. Perhaps my favorite likeness that has ever been created. It's I true. Really, it's I, it's I feel a, good about myself in that one. It's a classic. You are a <laughs> Bowie level space god on yeah. that shirt, and uh, we all love it. Make a great action figure, by the way. Um, oh, please, we have an, a guest that I'm so excited about. But before we bring her in, quick clubhouse keeping, um, guys. Jet ski special is happening. However, I don't know if you've heard, but there was an oil spill in Southern California and all of our lakes are closed right now. So yeah. just to let you know, we're, we're still planning. We're, we're working on it. We're like, we're still okay, planning. Well, there's, there's extreme drought and forest fires. So we can't go there. I'm like, oh, well, we'll, do, we'll do it in, in the ocean. And then, then there was an oil spill. So it's like, pick your disaster. Welcome to the yeah. future. Uh, we'll, we'll get. We'll find jet skis and we'll find water. And if, if I have to put a jet ski in a swimming pool, we're making. Yeah, we this will episode. do it. It's yeah. happening. Just want to let you guys know that's still on track. Uh, it might just be coming. <laughs> I think it'll still be happening in fall, but we need this planet to hold it together. Um. So aside from that, please subscribe and give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you do. We may read it on the air like this one. Um, Riley, I mean, I did send this. I texted this to Bryce, but I just forwarded it to you. So why uh, yeah, don't you read I'll, us I'll this five-star yeah. review? Okay, thanks. Out yeah, of this it's world. So weird. It, it's fine. He'll be, he, it, you know, he's been very busy. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, anyways, out of this world, five stars. Number one podcast in every dimension. Snuggle up with your favorite ghost, alien gray, and or cryptid, and conjure up this pod. The shadow person in the corner of your room approves. <laughs> <I like laughs> very nice. Five well stars. 
There you go. Well, hit us up, do us that favor, and make sure you're subscribing or following to Bigfoot Collectors Club. Uh, Violet is barking and telling you to do the same thing. Okay, let's get to this week's spooky, spooky guest. Uh, This is an actress who is near and dear to my heart. She was uh, my uh, co-pilot, I would say, uh, back on the show Saved that aired for one season on TNT. We were both (laughs) paramedics. Uh, You can currently see her in the Netflix top 10 show made right now, or you can listen to her as the co-host of the workplace comedy podcast, uh, club scouts of all timelines, please welcome for the very first time in the clubhouse, Tracy Villar. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. I'm Tracy. So it's been too long. I know it has. We haven't um, had a proper catch up in like 10 years. And no, the way no. I do it is say, come on my podcast and let's talk about ghosts. Let's, yeah, let's let's catch up 15 years. Let's like <laughs> do this right now on the air. Hi, Riley. Hi, Tracy. Nice to meet you. Nice to now, meet you, too. Now, Tracy, you're no stranger to podcasts. True or false? True. I am no true. stranger to podcasts, I, but I, I will always be a stranger to uh the whole engineering part of it like all of a sudden <laughs> we all had to become sound engineers once this pandemic started i was like tracy, come on tracy this i am ridiculous. a sound engineer and i feel the same way so. <laughs> that's the ghost in uh riley's life is they keep us on our toes you yeah know? <laughs> now tracy what is the workplace comedy podcast about because i know that our listeners like podcasts because they're listening to one right now ah but so it's it's th- that's more it's more of a scripted uh it, it's a improv comedy show about a um a water company a water bottling company in Colorado and they uh, these two girls who uh work together create a podcast within so it's supposed to be like kind of you know with two characters from the office created a podcast to find out there was a, a a burn log that was created and <laughs> they wanted to know who put together this burn log. And by using the podcast to have fun and find out who did it, that was their way of finding out gossip about everybody. And it, it, it gets, it gets spicy. It really does. Ooh, I it like does. it. Multi-layered. Yeah. I like it. A lot of gossip comes out and a lot of truth comes out. It, it was it was really fun. And it kept me busy because I was doing it while I was doing made in Canada. Uh-huh. And um thank God because uh made is it's it's a little dark. People <laughs> love it. <laughs> and uh it's just a it's you know it's a, it's a rough um it's a, it's a rough story, and people um, are reacting to it strongly. Mm. And for some people, it's too much for them because it's too close to home for some people. And um, so to do a comedy podcast while I was in between scenes was a true joy. I love it. So, and it sounds like you're using way more of your brain than we are on this show. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know, just come on, riff about ghosts. It'll be fine. <laughs> You're like, it's meta, it's scripted, we're, it's a comedy, we're writing jokes. You know, you're going to find out. Exploration of, of the human condition. Yeah, you know? this is like loosely labeled as a comedy on uh, your favorite podcast platform. So we'll see. You have your work cut out for you tonight, Tracy. But uh, everyone should go check out Workplace Comedy Podcast. Uh, yes. Tracy is the best, so check that out for sure. All right, Tracy, we we have a question. Okay, that we like Shoot. to ask all of our guests. Okay, what okay. is your personal paranormal history? Do you believe in ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot? Uh, have you ever encountered anything that you can't explain? Have you ever had a weird psychic reading? Have you had a strange dream that came true? Anything? Uh, what do you believe in all this stuff? Um, I do believe in ghosts. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of on the religious side of that, you know, ghosts and cause I, I just, 
I think a lot of it comes from going to Catholic school my entire life, even, mm. I mean, straight through. So, so I, I, as a kid, I definitely, I had trouble sleeping sometimes because my, my mother let me watch the Omen and the Exorcist, <laughs> but not rate, she, not, nothing with sex in it. So I knew nothing <laughs> about sex, which I was constantly trying to find out. But I knew a lot about uh, the devil and omen, and uh, I saw. I think I saw all the omens. Now, and... forgive me for being forward here, uh, but yeah. I do believe that in The Exorcist, she masturbates with the crucifix. Mm-hmm. See, I wouldn't know that. Right, <laughs> you're just like <laughs> I, 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 she's stabbing I would, her belly button. I, yeah, I would think she's she's she had an itch. <laughs> your, your mother I sucks. Had no what? idea. What in hell? What? <laughs> Because I was so I was so young watching it that my thing was, how is she able to lift up off the bed like that? Right. I think that's what it was, that's what it was with me was constantly trying to find out how like I was intrigued by ghosts and intrigued by you know just I, I, I just I guess I guess it was paranormal stuff, but I saw it as you know. I just saw it in a religious way. Well, sure. I mean, uh, the Holy Ghost gets top three billing in the church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like we always had, we always had saints around the house. Like my mom always had an altar and then I copied her. Like I have saints right now. And, and my husband even asked, why do we have that? <laughs> and I have rosary beads and, and I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's a habit. Like you just have it. I'm not doing anything. I'm not praying. I, I don't go to church. But I just have saints, you know, I have just a little altar, a, a mini version of what my mother had. Who's your guy? Who's my guy? Yeah, who's your saint? Who's like your go-to saint? Like who, um, who are you uh, thinking about if you're like, oh boy. I, if, Saint, if now Ignatius, the time to, uh-huh. Saint Ignatius is one. Uh, and I don't know, Saint Joseph. I just have Saint Saint Joseph. I don't I have I have a Saint Joseph in my right now in your so. hand clutching it to the point where your palm is bleeding um, <laughs> tracy do you know saint joseph or saint ignatius's superpowers uh ignatius and that's the school i went to i forgot what saint ignatius that what his superpower was you look it up i forgot what it was um X- x-ray vision probably yeah i think it was <laughs> he's a peeper um i know he was super kind but oh, I guess good. they all were. That, that is a superpower, <laughs> especially nowadays. But there was something. But there was something about him. I can't remember. But uh, just because I went to the school, I, I was fascinated. I, I, the, as a lot of times, anything the nun said, I was fascinated. And then, ironically, I ended up uh, when we moved to Venice. We lived in. And this is where I think, and this is where I saw ghosts. And we, we, I just, I wasn't afraid. Like I was cool with them. They were like comfortable ghosts, but it was uh, a rectory. So it was our house. And then we're next to a Catholic school and then a convent. So our house was the rectory where the brothers used to, to reside. So I was like, of course. Wait, of course, so I would you, end up in a, in a, a situation like this. You saw a ghost as you just so we used to that? sometimes like yeah sometimes I used to say did you see that that we just went upstairs and then <laughs> I was going go yeah I think I saw something but it was so comfortable it was just oh. comfortable and cool and like I wasn't afraid. Now I, wait a minute. Think, what? Sorry, Tracy. I was looking up Saint Ignatius. Uh-huh. who is Ignatius, who is the foremost patron saint of soldiers and of holy spiritual retreats. I missed whether this was the house you grew up in or the house you lived in as an adult. Where you're seeing these ghosts, the oh, rectory. No, uh, this is this is uh, the house we sold recent, n- not sold recently, but not about five years ago. I've been to that house, I believe. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. Yes. OK, cool. Got it. You That's like here that in Cal- California. <laughs> right. It's here in California. And somehow that's what I'm saying. I always end up in some kind of religious situation. 
And I was born on Good Friday. And sometimes I think that has something to do with it. I'm like, why am I so interested, you know, in, in everything religious, whether it's, it's uncomfortable or not. I'm, I was in, I'm interested in all of it. Can you elaborate a little bit more on these ghosts you were seeing? Like, was it a, a you were was it a feeling of the ghost, or you were physically seeing? It was like a like, yeah. Oh, it, cool. it, it it felt like it was like it was like a like a shadow that was going upstairs, and it was always around the stairs. Mm. And I was surprised that I wasn't afraid, but I do mm. believe that if you know what I truthfully believe is. If something happened in a household that was not good, I think you that's when you feel uncomfortable. Mm. Okay, and, yeah. you know, <laughs> like when like you a, know like something, a dark energy imprint. Yeah, when you something house. bad happened in a in a house, and I think that's when you see very strange things, and I think it's about whatever that the, that spirit is it needs to it just needs to be i don't know like it needs to be heard mm-hmm. like that's what i that's what i feel that tracks and i wonder if the house you guys lived in had at one point been part of the church grounds yeah it was so it saying, was. Yeah. Oh, it was Look, the rectory. While you were Googling and not paying attention. Boy, I'm sorry. You told us that. <laughs> Guys, Michael. I was looking at a ghost. <laughs> a ghost of my former hosting job on this <laughs> podcast. I feel like one of the nuns scolding you for not paying yeah. attention. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. playing catch up. Ghostbuster here. That, so, so this so all you're adds feeling up. Like these these ghosts that you were seeing were sort of like vibing. They were just sort of still going about their priestly yeah. duties, just hanging out. Yeah, they like there was something in. about it that, uh, and I honestly was hoping it was going to be okay because I said, I swear to God, if anything bad happened here, we're done with this house. <laughs> but I never. That is the correct correct I move. Swear, yeah, that that's how I talk to ghosts. I I swear to God, I swear to God, if you did something. <laughs> I am I am out of here. Out. You will be alone again. <laughs> yeah. And the kids never saw anything. No, like, mommy, mommy, waking up in the middle of the night. There's a shadow man in my bedroom. Nothing like that. Well, my daughter, she, she, she definitely didn't want to. I mean, I think, I think she sensed things. So she would, she slept with us a lot. So Mm -hmm. that was, that was her way of, she didn't want to be too far from us. So I think she could have sensed something, but she just didn't like to be downstairs without us. Cause she always said, Mm -hmm. where are you? Where, where, you know? So sometimes I thought maybe she was sensing something, but she would ask, you know, did you hear that? And I'm like, it's fine. It's, it's all fine. Nothing's wrong. It's Don't just worry. a ghost, but it's a comfy it's ghost. It's just, yeah. just a comfy ghost. Ghosts. It's, it's a, a very, a, this is Casper, friendly, friendly ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, if I saw Casper, I would freak the hell out. <laughs> Fuck that guy. He's weird looking. He's scary. He looks like an alien. <laughs> no, thank you. CGI ghost, get out of here. Um, <laughs> So, but nothing. So you grew up in, forgive me if I'm wrong. You grew up in New York, correctly? Yes. Correct? Correct. Correct. So any, any other than like statues and uh, uh, altars around the house, which in, in watching, being forced to watch horror movies on a repeat <laughs> basis, I feel like New York is like a, a haunted place, you know? Mm-hmm. Was there any... Oh, yeah. Any stuff there? And so I'm just I'm just trying to connect if there was something that's been in your family hanging out for a while. Like that's really what I'm trying to get down to. Well, you know, um I just think growing up, especially uh it, you know, Puerto Rican culture or just Caribbean, Caribbean, I'd have to say, you know, Santeria is a big part of, you know, the culture. And, you know, we always knew people who practice Santeria and you just don't mess with, you just, you just, 
just be cool. Be cool around people who who do that because we believed in it. Mm -hmm. You believed in it even though you guys didn't personally practice it. No. Yeah. We weren't messing with that. But, you know, if you hear somebody say, yeah, we're you need to watch your step or you need to, um, if anybody's saying they're going to put a curse on you, whatever you, (laughs) you, you kind of, you don't take that like lightly. Yeah. And there was always, you know, there's botanicas in the botanicas are where you, the, a lot of the stuff that you could get for, not just for Santeria, but we used to buy our saints there and our candles there there's still maybe one or two botanicas in in East Harlem. But, you know, a lot of times you're going there, sometimes, you'll, you know, you're getting a particular candle uh, for to pray on a particular thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. And especially if you see an angry girl going there. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious red flag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I need to buy the green one. I need the green candle now. <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. But that's where, not where do you I don't but I don't mess with that stuff. I don't mess with it because it's it it's true and it they can make things happen. So Yeah. So I don't it mess is, with it. it is interesting like growing up in the Midwest, like we, we really didn't have an equivalent of that. It was just sort of like if it wasn't your thing, then it was often like poo pooed and no one believed in it unless it was like, oh, there's some satanic ritual happening in the woods somewhere, you know, because they're always <laughs> scared of like Satanists mm-hmm. lurking about. But like there really isn't any equi- like Midwest equi- equivalent of like, oh, that's like they practice dark Jesus magic and we don't fuck around with that mm-hmm. and we respect it and we don't fuck around with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's cool that you grow up. Like that there was a, it seems like there was a spectrum there where it's like, we don't mess with that and we don't want it to mess with us. Right. We, we that's, don't. That's poo-poo exactly. It. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. That there's I mean, that, you, just, you know, you respect, power. you respect it. Yeah. yeah. But you there's don't. power to intention, you know, uh, regardless of, of how it, how it's uh, channeled and it's, uh, you know, especially what it is channeled through these, these sort of things that have been passed down through generations. It's like, you right. don't really, it's like, why, why, why would you, why would you quit get in the way of that? Why would you, what's, what's, what's right. the point of even trying right. to mess with yeah. it? Yeah. What, what are we going to do about it? You know what <laughs> I mean? Like <laughs> I'm going to go up against Santorina. Let me yeah, do nah, it. Nah, like, nah. meh, you know what? Set this one out. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. You know, it's equivalent to voodoo and juju in Africa. Um, it's all it's all, you know, equivalent to to the same this type of uh witchcraft. Mm-hmm. You know? And but I, then I got into because I so then I, I really I just wasn't digging uh Catholics just going to Catholic church anymore and the service was so boring and painful. Yeah just to sit there. So, um, but I like, but I, I, I like church. Like, I just like the, the building and I like the stained glass that I liked. And there was something mm-hmm. about it. And I like meditation that I like. So then I got into more metaphysical stuff. Like, Ooh. you know, like I go to Agape, that's like the church I go to. And then I got deeper into stuff and my friend, um, had a meditation. She had a meditation session at her house in in New York, and I said, "Okay." So I had my friend, you know, watch the kids, and I stayed overnight. And it was like this group, and I was really like concerned, but I was like, it's "My friend changed," and I had to know like what was happening. So I did something kind of cultish. I was like, "You know what? If it's a cult, fine." What? <laughs> Tracy, no, that's how it happens. <laughs> I was like, whatever. There's like, Let me just see. I just want to like see. There's like eight what other cults listening right now. They're like, God damn it. Would have been so easy. <laughs> Cult schmult. I just want to see what's going on here. So it was a, it was Peruvian. It was like, Peru, it was, you know, psychedelic. Uh, it was Peruvian plant. P- 
pills. <laughs> oh, you were doing some ayahuasca. Yeah. Oh, oh. shit. This conversation just yeah. hit next level. Oh, uh-huh. did it? Okay. Yeah. Into it. Okay, yes. go on. Go on. Yeah. yeah. So I um I told the woman I was and it was a therapist who was overseeing us. It was about 10 people, but and it was my friend, her her boyfriend and a lot of his family actually and a few friends. And the whole thing was to state your intention with what is it that's going on with you? What what is it that you want to solve? And then we took a pill and I told, listen, I'm a lightweight. So, so she said, I, so then she made sure that I had something that wasn't too much, but, but let me tell you, let me just tell you that Deepak Chopra just said, he just, uh, you know, approved of people or validated that people, especially who experience, I guess, real trauma should be allowed to, to use psychedelic, uh, medicines to because it is that healing oh yeah i totally believe in that so but with you know being monitored yes yes. but now this is becoming something that is starting to change how people see it Mm -hmm. i'm a big believer in that and have been for a long time i've been vocal about yeah like i i i I had to experience it i was like i just need to experience it and then i'm and then i'm I'm out i'm out (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm-hmm All right, so you're all sitting around to so, take this. So pill. yeah, so I, I took this pill and I was like, okay, this, I, things may be over for me now, but let me just try it. And you know, you get your you it definitely puts you in a deep, a deep meditation, like a deep. And the whole thing is like you are, you know, talking to the angels. You're just talk. You're mm-hmm. just talking. You're just talking to somebody. Did you, did you experience that? You felt that you were talking to another. Yeah. Like I definitely was seeing, um, like just this, I I was just somewhere else. I was like, in a. I was somewhere else. I don't know where I was, but it was extremely comfortable. Mm. And I came out feeling so comfortable with myself after, I mean, it, 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 she didn't give me too much of a, of a dosage because of, I told her, you know, like a, a, a one glass of wine and I'm all over the place. So. <laughs> she, <laughs> What's the ayahuasca equivalent of one glass of wine? Yeah. <laughs> what if she just gave you whatever one glass of wine me, in a she pill did, form? She, it wasn't, whatever she gave me wasn't too bad. Okay. <laughs> So I, I was not in it all, I wasn't in it all night, but it was a good, it was a good six hours, you know? Um, but and things, did, yeah, but did I, you I, I don't know, with... I just was in such a deep, uh, uh, like a, a deep comfort with myself that I, and just whatever, whatever was going on with me was gone. Like I just was calm. Oh. You know, and I and I definitely am. I'm a nervous person, and I'm uncomfortable and with a, a lot of things. But it, it just something went away. And my my friend went. She she she's a big believer in it and does it all the time. And she has, you know, she she had trauma going on in her life, and uh, she just did a one eighty. I she, she she's. She was just hardcore angry and completely turned her life around. Whoa. And every, everything. Wow. And, but, and, it, it, but she would, she is not a religious person. She's not into angels, anything. This girl, this, my friend was like now having conversations with angels and not like, and she was comfortable with it. And she's like, listen, the angels are telling me that. You got to do this, Tracy. <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> and I said, "What is this equivalent to?" And she said, "The closest thing I can tell you is Abraham Hicks. Mm. You know, Esther and Jerry Hicks. That's the closest thing I can tell you." So then I said, "Okay." So I started getting into that to help me understand how what what is this, and so it was. Um, it's like a yeah, 
So then We've I started not listening talked to about Abraham Hicks much on this show at all. Can you give like a little brief like this is what this is? I think a lot of our listeners would know, but we've just never talked about it. You know, it- yeah, <clears throat> she was she. So Esther Hicks was on was in The Secret. OK, and she's she's a channeler and she her her. You know, her. Uh, I guess uh, her philo- just not philosophy, it's not really, but just the way she explains law of attraction is deeper than uh, than the secret. Mm-hmm. So I listened to her, and then after a while, I started listening to her for you know every morning as I'm like getting the kids breakfast and lunch, and I just really absorbed what she was saying because it took a while to get the language that she was uh, using, but it's, it's this Abraham, first of all, is this being that, that uh, takes over. It, it takes over her and, and speaks through Esther Hicks. Mm-hmm. And she just, I don't know. She just completely understands what what's coming out of her mouth is like the answers to and to whatever questions you have and i mean whatever and so she she's on youtube and you she could just she has seminars and people just ask her questions and abraham is answering not esther you know through her but she she becomes like she's another person with abraham speaking through her right and answer just talks it's uh, it talks about law of attraction so that's and if i mean it, it changed it changed things for me so then by the time i went to this meditation in new york that was like a peruvian shaman's uh plants then i got it then i understood it better interesting and do you feel like you made contact with a higher intelligence that you were, did you hear anybody or, you know, contact anybody on the other side or? Um, it was something that mm-hmm. day it was something I felt like, I felt like I was more, res- I felt like I was more resistant. I was like a little afraid, mm-hmm. but if anything now, be. now I'm, I can, Okay, so then let me tell you the next thing. You ready? Yes. So the next thing that I got into was this other guy, Jose Silva, who is um, who I found through. I, I do this other thing called MindValley dot com, and uh, there's and it's you know ayahuasca and you know it, it's Jose Silva teaches that. But he died years ago, but he used to work for the CIA. <laughs> Whoa. And, you know, he actually learned this stuff. Tracy, I love you are exploring all corners of the internet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm so perfect. afraid to say what I'm saying, but. No, no. no this is it's honestly, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. Totally it's fine. out there. And Jose yeah, Silva, yeah. his thing is. The purpose of this is why I've gotten much better with like the other side. And he, he says the purpose of the other side is to help us that we should all be do, do what we can to communicate with the other side. The other side is trying to, to help us and give us answers. Yeah. So kind of like not being afraid of, the other side. The thing is, you have to get into a deep. You have to get into deep, uh, a deep meditation, and deep relaxation. The more relaxed you are, you can you can communicate with the other side. Mm-hmm. I totally and agree. You, yeah, and you never, you never. Okay, this is you just never feel. Th- it's too sad when especially someone close dies because they're right there. Mm-hmm. 
And it's so he that's his thing. It's like he wishes everybody were were to 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 use this method that he teaches. So like I'm in the middle of, of his book and learning how to um communicate. <laughs> nice. Like I can't even believe I'm you wanted no, to interview, a... interview me about this because I'm like, oh my God, I like I actually you You're know, into this that. stuff, right? Well, and also, like, maybe it's all synchronicis, uh, synchronicity, yeah. you know, at play in that sense. But synchronicitous, we have a, you know, we have a friend of the show, Adela Levine, who's a medium who comes on, you know, a couple times a year. And this, echo, you know, you're echoing a lot of the stuff that she says that the other side, the spirit realm is really there to help and to guide. And when you die, it is like just going into another room. And they are with us where they're all around us. And, you know, it's just that we have a hard time being where we are on the end of the spectrum, being able to see and understand where they are, you know, so that all tracks, you know, we've talked about this on the show before. Um, do you feel like you've made any kind of contact on the other to the other side or not yet? No, I have. Ooh, can you but I don't share? say anything to like I, I, you know like I don't really say anything to anybody. If I tell like my daughter or or my husband, mm -hmm. <laughs> they just look at me like stop, just right. stop it. No, but well, we, that's we, the thing is there's a stigma right of like oh this yeah, is crazy is. or this is ridiculous or I'm being you know I'm being silly. But it's like there life is so mysterious and we yeah. don't have all the answers and there's no shame or harm in exploring um sort of these outer reaches of our mental world you know there's uh there's something there people have been looking at it as long as there have been people yeah so it's it's not ridiculous and it's not frivolous you know to uh explore kind of the connections that your mind has to the universe you know yeah i mean i i use it for any and and you know abraham hicks says this and you know Jose Silva, you know, just, I mean, you can ask anything from which beans should I buy when I go to Trader Joe's? Should I buy the red ones or should mm -hmm. I buy black beans? I mean, which direction should I go? Should I go? And I mean, I, I know when I'm not listening, I, I completely feel it. And I know when I have the answer. You How know, do you I'm, know when you have the answer? It's, what happens? It's, I mean, sometimes the voice, it, it's, it, I could hear, like, the voice is so clear. It is so clear. It's like knowing something before it happens, like saying something and then it happens like 30 seconds later. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I know. I knew that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. it, that's exactly what it feels like. It's so natural that it took me forever to figure that out, that. It's not, you know, somebody who's on a bullhorn. It's like you just, <laughs> you can just hear it. You can just, you can, you know, I don't know. It's so clear now. And does it that, does that feel different than what someone would describe as being psychic or having a premonition? Or is it, do you think that's what being psychic is? Or is I it think completely that, I think different? Yeah, I think it's no, I think there's some connection, but yeah, it is like one of the one of the uh one of my one of my friends friend who came to the meditation that day was psychic. Oh, so mm -hmm. this is one one story I could tell you. Um she was there because she wanted to work with the the Peruvian shaman, you know, she wanted to be a practitioner, but <clears throat> She had some work to do and she actually wanted to work on, she cannot see things for herself. She could only see things for other people and global, global things. Wow. So this was 2017 when I went to the meditation and she said, I have a message for you. This was the morning after the meditation. So we're like all, you know, in pajamas and we're all having coffee. And, and then I'm like, why? Tell me. And she said, you know, she taught, she asked me about my daughter. She said, she said, you have a daughter? And I said, yeah. She goes, yeah, you, um, you know, just, she really needs you. Just, you know, she told me to, to, 
to to work with her like she just she just needed me more than what I was doing like just the average mom thing she was I needed to like focus more on her and I said okay mm -hmm. and then she said um because I was done with the industry. I was like, okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is not working. And she said, no, you're not done. And she said, you, she said, you're really funny. And she said what, something was coming up for me. She said, and it's a nurse. For some reason, you're playing a funny nurse. And and I was like, okay. And um, she said, so this is when Trump... Trump at this point won and she said she didn't know why she said that she goes she just said a lot of people are gonna die a lot Whoa. Whoa. 2017 and I thought it was racial I thought it was gonna be some race war I was like really she goes oh god but it's a lot like a lot of people are gonna die and I was like she said it's gonna take a long time for his supporters to to see the light it's going to take his, almost the entire his entire presidency but the death i thought was was a race war and it, and it, it <laughs> right, I had no right. idea i had Whoa. no idea that of course that it was covid um yeah she just she could just and then she she uh she said things about uh um she she could see a modern day. She said there's going to be a modern day lynching. Whoa. Oh, and whoa, that was, it? she just kept saying, like, she kept saying that. And I think this is the George Floyd thing. And when were you like, now Absolutely. back to the part where I get hired as a funny nurse? <laughs> Exactly. Can we circle back when to is that, that going to happen? When am I getting that job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are going to die. Yeah, okay. Now. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but she, and and she she really, um, she she just needed to see, see what was going on with herself. And that's why she was there. And she was, having a hard time with her own situation and couldn't mm -hmm. and could not solve it because mm -hmm. she couldn't see. So I, I do think there's a difference. There's a, like when, when I, when I could feel that, when I could feel, when I am doing, you know, when I meditate and I'm meditating consistently, 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 there's a quietness where I could, I could tune in and I could, I could feel answers. Wow. But when I start getting, you know, distracted by here, just the, just being here on earth and being here in this city and being, and yeah. I'm so deep in it, I can't hear it. Yeah. Bogged down by the material world. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well that's cool that you're breaking through and getting some answers and maybe off mic, you should <laughs> teach us some of these ways. Um, Cause I'd love to keep talking about this. And unfortunately we got to play a game. Oh, okay. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta play a game with you. Um, but I, I think that's great. And I think like, I mean, I think we're all craving a way to tune out all the noise and can yeah. and find a way to get through. And um, yeah, sign me up. Hell, yeah. I yeah, just I love mean, your perspective it's, on it too. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, you're not like overly kind of woo woo about it and you're just like a very matter of fact and exploring it and, and aware of it. And it really, it's about, you know, finding your inner stillness and tuning into what's already there. And I, I think it's uh I think the world could benefit from this kind of perspective right now. I really do. I, I really it's, admire what you've been saying. Yeah, thanks. I, 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 I didn't even, you know, I didn't even see it that way because I've just been searching, you know, just, just searching as, as a little girl from mm -hmm. early on. I was already curious, but I'll tell you two things I did. 
I've tried astral projection oh. and I read Paramahansa Yogananda's autobiography. Mm. That's how wow. you're going there. Any, any luck with the astral projection? <laughs> I, I didn't even know that's what it was until after I was like, Ooh, I think that's what happened. But I, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I think I was in such a deep meditation that Where did I was you go? Like, why? I I mean I was still in the room. I was still in my I was still in my bedroom. This is when um I was still living with my mom in New York. Uh but I but I was done with with high school. And okay. uh I'm like looking I not I'm looking at my body. I'm like why am I down there? Like Whoa. I'm looking at myself, but I was above myself. And I was like what the hell? I'm up here. <laughs> I love that you're just casually throwing in an out of body experience right before we're about to move on to another segment. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> all right. This is a game that we play with all of our guests. I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. Uh, if you're open to it, you're going to say, believe it. If you're not open to it, you're going to say bullshit. Okay. If you're ahead. on the fence, you got to come down on one side or the other. All right. All right. All right. And if there's something you want to circle back to at the end of the list, we'll go back there. But okay. I'm going to go, as, we'll, we'll try to go as quickly as possible. All right. Okay. Tracy Villar. This okay. is a game that we call Bullshit or Believe It. Okay. All right. Tracy, on your mark, get set, ghosts. Believe it. UFOs. Believe it. Bigfoot. Mm, bullshit. Vampires. Mm, bullshit. Shadow people. Believe it. Loch Ness Monster. Oh, believe it. <laughs> Little gray aliens. Mm, believe it. Werewolves. Mm, bullshit. Parallel universes. Believe it. Zombies. Hmm. On the fence. <laughs> Gotta pick one. Gotta pick. All right, bullshit. Shapeshifters. Uh, what are shapeshifters? Like someone who can shape into like an animal <laughs> or another human. Oh. Oh. Hmm. I forgot to mention this is sort of our Halloween version of this list, so oh, there's bullshit. some more. Okay, <laughs> it's a little, okay great. It's a little kookier. Uh, believe it. Hell. Mm, bullshit. Astrology. Uh, believe it. ESP. Believe it. Witches. Believe it. Demons. Believe it. Atlantis. Oh, uh, yeah, all right, I believe it. Mothman. I don't know what that is. Uh, some say it's an extra dimensional entity that showed up in West Virginia in the late 60s and was a harbinger of a uh, bridge collapsing that killed a bunch of people like the week of Christmas. Uh, it's like bullshit. a cryptid prophet of doom. Yeah. I don't know. Bullshit. The Jersey Devil. Um, bullshit, but I do think Jersey, you know, is, this is weird. You know, the devil. Pine Baron. <laughs> Pine Baron. <laughs> I'm like kidding. I'm like kidding. Yeah. The biblical it's a devil. New York thing to say. Anything in Jersey is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't know. The biblical devil. Oh, oh, bullshit. Life on other planets. Believe it. Life after death. Believe it. Wow. Well done. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot got a bullshit. We understand. <laughs> we get a lot of that. Yeah. Still friends. It's I okay. think that you and I would have a conversation, though, where I'm pretty sure I could get you on board with the fact that there could be a relic hominid species that's like numbers are really small living out in the deep, deep forests that, that doesn't want to be bothered. And once he sold you on that, I might be able to get you on board with he comes in and out of portals and is an extra dimensional being. There's that. Maybe. Too. You know, we could talk after. I, I could buy that. 
There you go. See, I could. Oh, I, I could. I could buy that. Bryce, if you're listening, that's how you do 60 seconds to sell Skunk Ape. Okay, Bryce? <laughs> it's a segment that we didn't play because he's not on this list. All right. Yeah, where is Bryce? Also, where is I Bryce? Really What's happening? I thought he would have showed up by You now. know what? We're going to take a break. I'm going to text him, and then uh, we're going to come back, and it's time for this week's story of high strangeness straight out of Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I call tried calling went straight to voicemail, so I don't know what's happening. Um, but uh, I guess Bryce won't be joining us tonight. That's fine, because uh, we have uh, someone who's just as full of mystery with us tonight, <laughs> Tracy Villar, <laughs> actor and podcaster extraordinaire. Um, Tracy, so every every week we share a story of high strangeness from history, and I'm particularly glad that I pulled this one out of zombie Bigfoot's cryptid crypt, because I think this one might hit a little close to little Tracy's home. We'll find Uh-oh. out. Uh Oh, here we go. Riley, you ready? Ready. Hit that music. You can't hear the music right now, Tracy, but there will be music. Okay. Hit yeah, it. Riley. Later. Listen to the episode. <laughs> it had been an exceptionally cold and snowy winter in England in the year 1855. On February 9th, the people of Devon would wake to find mysterious hoof prints in the snow that stretched for miles along the coastal region, seemingly passing through solid objects, up walls, and across roofs. With no plausible explanation for the tracks, word spread that some demonic entity had traversed through the fields and gardens of Devon. This is the mysterious story of The Devil's Footprints. Devon, England is a coastal county located in southwest England. It features rocky cliffs, moors, beaches, and medieval towns. Like the rest of England, Devon is steeped in folklore and hauntings. Some of its numerous haunt locations include the Coach and Horses Inn, where executions routinely took place, and visitors have seen apparitions of hanged men dangling from the ceiling and a mysterious lady in black roaming the grounds. Or there's Chambercore Manor. Built in the 11th century, this place is said to be haunted by an angry spirit whose body had been sealed up in a secret room and a photobombing ghost who likes to pop in tourists' photographs. And then there's Buckland Abbey, bought by Sir Francis Drake in the 17th century. It took so little time for the famous explorer to renovate the abbey that rumor was he had made a deal with the devil to complete the project quickly. Now his unhappy spirit haunts the grounds, waiting around for a ghostly black hearse and being chased by packs of black dogs. Some say uh, that he has a penchant for kidnapping unbaptized babies. And he also is said to inhabit an old drum he had commissioned called Drake's Drum, which is kept in the Abbey. Legend says that Sir Francis Drake bangs that drum whenever England is in danger. If Drake did, in fact, make a deal with the devil, it wouldn't be the last time Satan's presence was known in Devon, or at least someone with a devilish countenance. In 1847, a wave of attacks took place along a coastal road that were briefly blamed on the creature known as Spring-Heeled Jack. This strange humanoid with supernatural powers was first reported harassing innocent women and bounding across London rooftops in 1837. He wore a helmet and white oilskin suit, sprouted flames from his mouth, and could leap higher and further than any normal man. You can learn more about spring Jack in BCC episode 77 with Eric Edelstein. In July of 1847, police in Tynmouth, Devon, were on the hunt for an individual who was described like Jack, or as they stated, a delinquent of this genus 
who occupied himself during the winter in frightening and annoying defenseless women, some of whom were rather roughly handled. One of these victims was a servant of one Miss Morgan, who was assaulted by a man dressed in heavy ox furs and wearing a devilish mask. Eventually, a 60-year-old man by the name of Captain Finch, a man of ill health who was well regarded around town because of his rank, was arrested, tried, and found guilty of the crimes. He was only fined 17 shillings for each assault he committed. That's the way that went back then. Despite the depressingly human explanation behind these particular Spring Hill Jack attacks, Tinmouth Road was known as Spring Hill Jack Road and considered to be haunted by the London ghost and his sharp steel claws. But there would be no earthly explanation for what walked in Devon in the brutal cold of 1855. On February 9th, 1855, during a particularly hard winter, residents awoke after a blizzard to find miles-long, cloven-shaped footmarks in the freshly fallen snow. A single line of tracks that stretched far and wide up and down the coast. According to a journal belonging to Reverend H.T. Ellicombe, the vicar of Clist Street George, Clist St. George, the tracks were strange in nature and hard to identify. He wrote, The marks which appeared on the snow, which lay very thinly on the ground at the time, and which was seen on Friday morning to all appearances, were the perfect impression of a donkey's hoof, the length four inches by two and three quarter inches. But instead of progressing as that animal would have done, or indeed as any would have done, feet, right, left, it appeared that foot had followed foot in a single line, the distance from each tread being eight inches, or rather more, the footmarks in every parish being the exactly same size and the steps the same length. An eyewitness report of the track stated... The creature seems to advance to the doors of several houses and then have retraced its steps, but no one is able to discern the starting or resting point of the mysterious visitor. Everyone is wondering, but no one is able to explain the mystery. The poor are full of superstition and consider it little short of a visit from old Satan or some of his imps. Indeed, the tracks did behave in a peculiar manner. First, there was the wide area in which they were found. Reports came from at least 30 different locations, spanning somewhere between 40 and 100 miles. The area extended from Exmouth up to Topsham and across the ex estuary to Dawlish and Tynmouth, and even potentially as far south as Totnes and Torquay, and then as far off as Weymouth and Lincolnshire. All towns we're all familiar with. Of course. And nothing seemed to get in the way of the path of the devil. Tracks would lead to a wall, then hop up along the narrow length of the wall, and then continue down along its way, traipsing across groves and open fields, one hoof print after the other in a perfect line. High walls surrounding gardens and grounds were no obstacle for the footprints. They simply appeared on the other side of the garden wall and continued along their way as if they had jumped over a great height or passed through solid stone. This eyewitness, one W. Courthope Foreman of Exmouth in East Devon, found tracks in his yard. The footprints came up the front garden within a few feet of the house, stopped abruptly, and began again at the back within a few feet of the building. In some accounts, the prints themselves also appear to have been created by something hot touching the snow, sharply searing the tracks with a crisp edge. Torch-wielding mobs went searching for the creature who created the long line of mystery prints. In one instance, hunting dogs followed the tracks into the woods and came back yelping and wailing in pure terror. No culprit was ever found. The tracks seemingly began and ended as if the being appeared and vanished out of and into thin air. 
Villagers fear treading out after dark, worried that the devil may take their soul. Meanwhile, the story of the devil's footprints spread to London, where the tales spread in newspapers. Theories were put forth as to what could have caused them. A hopping frog, a badger, a boring old rat, and perhaps an escaped kangaroo. One of the more creative theories put forth, and an explanation of high strangeness that we've heard so many times before, was that the tracks were caused by none other than a balloon. Author Jeffrey Household, a prolific 20th century novelist who was known for writing thrillers with titles like Rogue Male, The Courtesy of a Death, and Dance of the Dwarves, studied the case and concluded the cause of the tracks was an escaped experimental balloon, no, Riley, I'm not making this up, Mm -hmm. that had traveled from the Devonport dockyard that was trailing two shackles on the end of a rope. According to Household, the incident was covered up because of property damage the balloon caused by wrecking greenhouses, colliding into conservatories, and smashing windows. This information came from a local man household interviewed whose grandfather had been employed at the Devon Dockyard at the time of the incident. Now, how that balloon evaded being struck against a wall or caught in a tree is anyone's guess because no balloon or shackles were ever found. Perhaps the balloon belonged to the devil himself. (laughs) Perhaps... This very devil's balloon is the source of all mysterious phenomena from Devon to Roswell. But I digress. The truth is, nobody truly knows what caused a miles-long row of single cloven hoof prints the night of a blizzard in Devon in 1855. Perhaps one day science will explain, but I have a gut feeling... Hell will freeze over before that happens. Let the mystery remain. And the next time it snows, lock the door to keep the devil at bay. (laughs) The devil's footprints. Well told, sir. Well told. Thank you. Have you ever heard of this phenomenon before, Tracy? I have not. Spooky, spooky. I want to live in this place and live in this town and this should be also a a Disney haunted totally. house like yeah. right I'm a di- like a Disney you're so good Michael I'm like the Damn. devil's balloon well th- yeah the devil's balloon <laughs> opening summer 20 2023 at Disney's <laughs> California adventure yeah, right exactly. Don't let anybody steal like, that idea. Somebody will take that. Wow. Oh, it's, it's already gone out to the internet. It's, someone is, already made it. We haven't even posted this yet. That's, now how, we, that's how that goes. We like to say, what the hell is that? I mean, what do you think this is? Some people are like, oh, it was just a little mouse hopping in the snow. But these things allegedly went on for miles and miles and miles from one town to another across stretches of fields and farmland. And, um, you know, because of the way records were at the time, there's not a ton other than the news stories and then this one journal they found years and years later. But it's a weird it is a weird story of high strangeness. Something created these tracks, Uh, not necessarily the devil. But I don't know when you hear something like this, Tracy, what do you think? I think it could be some kind of. When I hear stuff like this, I always think something, some again, something bad happened. Uh, and oh, and I think a spirit stays around because it's not finished. Uh, I always think that, like, something not good happened. Well, what's interesting, too, is the way it's described is, like, it went up to people's doors and then went back, you know, like, retraced its steps. So it was going door to door, which is really spooky in some in some cases. So, yeah, maybe it's like some ghost or spirit lost in the blizzard, you know, looking for help. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I... that sticks with me here is that, like, skeptics have been blaming balloons. Yes. Since, like, 
1850 whatever yes. it's not a new phenomenon i did not understand <laughs> like why are we always like oh it's a balloon like we're just we always go to that also how did a balloon carrying like two shackles because they're saying the shackles the c clamp of the shackles made the prince but like they would drag they wouldn't be like prince you know what i mean I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. No, it's a very, it's a very silly explanation that I, I find very amusing. Yeah. You know? um, also, Michael, you really like took us on a whole tour of the regions of England with all those yeah. accents. That I was... tell you what. Well, thanks, and I'm sure that our English listeners will appreciate <laughs> each and every vowel <laughs> and consonant of that. Um, no, this one was fun because I was like, "What else is going on around here?" And it's like, "Oh, like the rest of England, this place is just fucking haunted." The other thing that's cool is like not too far. I mean, it's one county over to the to the west is uh, Cornwall County, where like Tintagel is, which which is supposed to be the birthplace of uh, King Arthur. You know what I mean? And it's just like you know when you've got when you've got history that's that legendary and that mm. old. You know, you're going to these like ghost stories go back for centuries and centuries, you know, thousands of years. I don't know. It's a haunted place. It's cool. I love England. And yes, I miss it. It's been a while since I've been there. Um, thank you. English I also listeners. found it very amusing that that author was literally a household name. Yes. <laughs> Maybe the first. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. That was a good one. Um, bad jokes. Tracy, any yes, final thoughts of the devil who walks among us? Huh. Well, I, well, for one thing, I I cannot compliment you more on how you reeled me in with all the accents. And <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. This is so good. <laughs> I well, thanks. Like, you are going for it. He's a born storyteller. I love yeah. it. Hey man, but you gotta step I, it up I, like, for Zombie Bigfoot's Crypt to Crypt. I'm telling you, that's right. I love it. I love it. I, I, I was, I just, I didn't know if that's what you were gonna do, and then I was like, look at him. This is amazing. See, Tracy's well, just like my proud mom. Lines. She's now just my yeah. proud mom. She's <laughs> gone from <laughs> astral projector, so good. spirit guide, and now she's just my oh, proud mom. Oh, Michael, my Michael, he's so talented. <laughs> well, Tracy, where can people find your talents if we want to catch up? Watch you on something. Follow you on Instagram. What do we do? Where do we go? Uh, well, listen, I'm new on Instagram, so don't judge. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I have like I, I have like nine pictures up, and I'm like trying to add more. And my daughter's they're all like, of ghosts, though. Don't worry, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Casual, comfortable ghosts. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can catch me on. The number two show Netflix right now made. Damn. Congrats. That are people are. Oh, and you know what? Episode five is very close to what we're talking about. Whoa. Okay. And it gets into, and, and we, we shot in the house that they did dress. They had to, you know, they, they, and, and it's in a forest um, and something You'll see in that episode something has happened to this to this boy, and it's it's uh somebody does the show who, get spooky ooky, or is it just it, real it world? It really does. Yeah, it gets oh. really spooky. people get creeped out by that one, but it it um connects to what's going on for her for right okay. uh Ooh, Margaret Qualley's character, and that's what I mean about when something bad has happened. I do feel like spirits get trapped. And they're not done. Yeah. And it needs to come out. And it helps. It, I mean, it honestly helped me not be so um, afraid of ghosts anymore. Because I feel like if, if, I, if, <laughs> if I could talk directly to ghosts or, you know, I, 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 my reaction, my tendency is to say, what's, what's the matter, honey? What's, what's, what's wrong? What happened? Talk to me. <laughs> like, that's my like take that. on things. Like, I, that's exact. So when you're reading this, that's how I, that's kind of what came to me, that something, something deep, deeper happened. And then yeah. you have this happening in, in a town. 
You know? I love that. And then everyone's just like, it's the devil. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, it's <laughs> not helping anybody. The, it's either the devil or a balloon. But I like that they went with the devil's balloon. They really yes. the devil's brought balloon. it together. It's the Venn diagram. Yeah. The devil, a balloon, and the devil's exactly. balloon right there in the middle. <laughs> And of course, check out Tracy's podcast, Workplace Comedy. You got to want to check that out for sure. I know I will. Tracy Villar, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Uh, This has been a blast. Um, Everyone, follow us at Instagram, Bigfoot Collectors Club, at Twitter, Bigfoot Pod. Uh, Join the other side, patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club for three to five bonus episodes every month. I've got nothing to plug. I'm just, we got to get out of here. I got to see if I can track down Bryce Riley. Uh, anything before we check in with Bryce? I mean, I'm, I'm peace drone on Instagram, but I got a, we got a message from Bryce. Uh, it's like an audio message. Should I, should we see what's going on here? Wait, really? He texted, uh, sent you a VM? Yeah, no, he sent a, yeah, it's like a, he sent one of those audio text messages. Should I That's play it so and see what's happening? Weird. I didn't get that. that oh, yeah. Okay, but hold on here. I'll play it. Okay. Hello? Hello, Michael? Riley? Where are you guys? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Where the hell am I? Uh, that's weird. That's weird. I don't um, like that at all. Um, what are you guys all right. I don't know um let's just try calling him back everyone yeah i'm gonna uh, call him all right we should Tracy, wrap thanks up. yeah we got we got we better wrap yeah. this up um uh, uh, until next week everyone good night and good night I nice to meet you riley uh, I, yeah nice to meet you too tracy and uh go get regressed Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.